Hey guys, it's Robert. Today I'm doing a product video in a little bit of a different way. I'm going to be reviewing two different items. The Transshine Professional Condenser Microphone, which you see here. This was sent to me by a company called Tonor. From what I gather, they are an importer of um, products from uh, Japan and China and countries like that. And um, they were really uh, cool to work with. I don't know a ton about the company and I don't want to misrepresent them. So please check out the links that I include in the description. A huge fan of this microphone. And I'm also going to be reviewing a, another item, which is this professional recording microphone stand. It's a boom stand. And these are two items that I'm actually using at this very moment to record this video. The microphone stand, I am less of a fan of. Um, it's workable, um, but it's not my favorite item. The microphone, on the other hand, I really, really, really like. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Um, right away you have some specifications there. And you can see those um, has directions for the use and the um, the pattern, the cardioid pattern on it, and um, it's a it's a really good mic. Like I said, it's very reminiscent of the Blue Spark, um, but much cheaper. The price point on this is probably the best part about it because um, this is a microphone that has a really nice look to it. It's got the color there. It's got that um, sort of, like I said, blue spark sort of capsule design. Comes with a little pop filter to uh, make sure you don't have too many plosive sounds into the microphone. And it also comes with this uh, shock mount, which helps to reduce sound when you move the cam move the uh, microphone around or um, accidentally knock it or something like that. Um, the coolest thing, like I said, is the price because this is a really, really higher quality microphone than I would I expected. Um, I've been using this for all kinds of recordings, including this one, but it's probably going to be the one that I use to re-record my audiobook when I get around to it or when I record my next audiobook. Um, it's also my new mic for any podcasts that I end up doing because it has a really good um, low noise level, so it only picks up your voice and not too much of the background noise unless you make a ton of it or you have the sensitivity up really high but even right now um, I'm recording this at 85 on my uh, zoom h1 which if this was plugged into my 3do it would be like all kinds of background noise <clears throat> so it's a really good mic for when you um, don't want a lot of noise between the things that you're saying probably not great as your shotgun mic probably not great as anything other than like a broadcast style mic. It comes with a XLR to basically um, a mini, what do you call it, a auxiliary cable, you know what I'm saying, the one that plugs into everything. Um, that's the only cord that comes with it, but it's a nice long cord, as you can see here. It's very sturdy, and um, I, I appreciate the quality of the cord, and it's handy because it plugs into the stuff that I already have. So, just some close-ups of the product. Like I said, it's really nice looking. Um, the quality of it, probably best for normal narrating. As you can hear, it sounds pretty good for soft speaking, and I've done a video with whispering as well. It, it holds up and it's serviceable for those, but I think it really shines during sort of regular narrations. For ASMR videos, it, it kind of, um, you have to have the sounds very close to the mic to pick it up. Um, and, uh, that's, that's okay, but if you're planning on doing, you know, anything other than being right up on the mic, that can be a little bit problematic. So some close-ups of the finish and what it looks like up close. That little screw there is just a screw to keep the pop filter in place. But it's really a simple device, you know, it's classy looking, it's about... Um, a little bit bigger than palm sized. I showed you a second ago what it looked like compared to my iPhone. Um, 
and so it doesn't take up a ton of room, which is really nice. Um, some of these microphones are pretty huge, as an alternative to the uh, blue snowball, which is what I used before for most narration type things. This is a big step up and a big step down in the size department, which is which is really nice. And uh, the shock mount, basically, you just slide it in. It's really really simple. It's pretty snug fit. You can turn it upside down and it won't slide out. And uh, that definitely helps reduce the, well, the shock <laughs> when it's moved around. Um, particularly good for things like uh, if you're using it for a streaming mic when you're playing games or whatever and you pull it over but you don't want it to make a bunch of noise when you do, that's what it's helpful for. And that's the um, part that screws into the stand. And so this is the uh, boom stand that I was talking about. Um, like I said, it's not my favorite. It works, and it's the only um, stand that I have for this mic so far. It's very simple. You can see it has a couple springs on there and a few joints. The uh, clamp down there at the bottom is what clamps onto the table or tripod or stand or whatever you want. Um, the arms itself, arms, arms themselves, it, it can be a little bit hard to maneuver them where you want. Um, it kind of fights back against you sometimes and it just doesn't quite always get into the configuration that seems like it would work best. So that's my main complaint with it. Um, it takes a lot of trial and error to get it to fit the right way you want it to. This is basically how you do it. You just put it onto a table or whatever and you screw it in. I often just do this on my on my desk, um, but right now it's clamped onto the camera tripod that I use, and that holds just fine. I haven't had any problems with the clamp holding. I have had problems with the little um, contact piece on the clamp, the, the round piece that's there. That's been falling off, and that's kind of an annoying, but um, nothing that's a deal breaker. Um, so you just put the rest of the stand into the clamp and then tighten it down with that thumb screw there. And this is what it looks like when it's kind of, uh, excuse me, fiddling with the camera, when it's kind of just uh, up in the air. The uh, metal part up there is what you screw the mic on with. And uh, one other small limitation of the um, pop filter is that it doesn't have a good way to screw on. You have to re rotate the whole pot filter, or sorry, not the shock mount. Um, you have to rotate the whole shock mount around like that, which is a little lame, but it's it's not too big of a deal. As with most of these kind of imported um, products, the peripheral type things that come with it, the accessories and whatnot, aren't always the best. It's really the hardware that, that shines, and that's definitely the case here. So as I'm demonstrating you can put it in upside down which is cool and that doesn't fall out or anything um, helpful if you don't want it right up in your face but of course you can do it right side up as well and it just kind of moves around on the boom um, once you get the boom into place it's not like at risk of falling or anything like that like I said it just sometimes uh, fights with you a little bit about where you can maneuver it to You see, it's kind of fighting against me there. It wants to be where it wants to be. And uh, maybe I'm just a bad operator. Maybe it's a lot of user error going on. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't had a boom arm before, I will say that. This just um, has given me a little bit of a hard time. So I'd like to find a better stand for this. But for now, this, this definitely works. So that was the mic. I put all of the links into the description. Please check them out and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And I'm sure you'll hear more from this mic at some point. All right, bye guys.